The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Uh, Mr Speaker, my question is to the Prime Minister. Does he have confidence in his Minister of Finance? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, absolutely. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr Speaker, does he agree with his Minister of Finance's statement that the fact that wages are 30 per cent cheaper in New Zealand than in Australia is, quote, an advantage and a good thing? Never seen. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Uh, Mr Speaker, uh, I agree that it's likely to attract investment in certain areas because the New Zealand workforce is highly skilled. The Honourable Mr. Leader Speaker, of the Opposition. Mr Speaker, when he claimed on Television One that his finance minister had been quoted out of context in saying that cheap wages were an advantage, what from the following quote isn't clear about what Mr English was saying? Espiner, you said that one of our advantages over Australia was that our wages were 30 per cent cheaper. I mean, is that an advantage now? English, well, it is a way of competing, isn't it? And later, Espiner, but is it a good thing? English, well, it is a good thing if we attract the capital. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, the, the Finance Minister gave a speech in Auckland which was quite wide-ranging. That was one point that he made. But I would make this uh, point, Mr Speaker, and that is that when one looks at real after-tax wages from September 2008 to the present point in time, in New Zealand terms they've grown 10 per cent. In Australia they've grown 6.2 per cent. On my calculation, actually, this government has closed the gap with Australia. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Nobody believes it. Order. Mr. Speaker. Order. I've called the Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr Speaker, with inflation under his government in the last quarter at a 20-year high, does he think that New Zealand workers facing rising costs of living agree with him that having wages 30 per cent lower than their Australian counterparts is an advantage and a good thing? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Well, Mr Speaker, for a start off, um, the wage gap blew out under the nine years of a Labor government, so let's get a few things right. Secondly, inflation was higher because of the GST adjustment, which was fully adjusted for. Uh, and Mr Speaker, New Zealand workers are happy that this government has been cutting taxes and therefore lifting real after-tax wages. Uh, the supplementary question, Honourable Mr. Leader of the Opposition. Why does the Prime Minister go on pretending that the wage gap with Australia is closing when the 2025 task force that he himself set up reported last year, and I quote, we do not see any realistic possibility that the gap in real per capita income has narrowed in the last year, end quote. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, if anyone's pretending it's Phil Goff to be the leader of the Labor Party, because that's about to be Andrew Little. Uh, point of order, Mr point Speaker. Of order, the point of order, the Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Order. Why are you useless? Useless. Now, members know when a point of order is called, they must treat it with respect and silence. I've not asked anyone to leave the House for breaching that very strict rule, but I, my patience is wearing a bit thin on it. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition, point Mr. of order. Mr Speaker, is it an order for the Prime Minister to answer in that way simply because he knows that he's wrong? Order, no, no, order. Now, I, I extended the member the courtesy of making sure the House was quiet for his point of order, and the point of order was fair enough the way it started, but then it started to, to depart from what's acceptable by way of point of order. The, the reason why the Prime Minister answered the way he did was the nature of the member's question. The member asked, why does the Prime Minister pretend something? And when, when members ask that kind of question, they'll probably get an answer about why the Prime Minister pretends or why, what, what pretensions may be. And it's the sort of question where, as Speaker, I can't insist on any particular answer. Solutions in members' own hands. They need to be a little more cautious with the language in the question. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. <laughs> Sup supplementary question, Mr Speaker. Was the... Uh, the $43 million bailout of Media Works by way of a deferred payment, a loan under the Public Finance Act, as set out in the document that Mr English signed, or not a loan, as Mr English claimed on uh, the television program on Sunday? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, I don't have the public accounts with me, so I can't, can't confirm that. The member can have a look at it. But I will say one thing about that particular situation, Mr Speaker, and that's this. That, that deal was offered to any media company 
Nine companies from memory took it up. A number of companies did not. If it was such a good deal, why didn't every company take it up? Question num supplementary, supplementary question, question the Leader of the Opposition. Does the Prime Minister have confidence in the Minister of Finance's decision to extend a taxpayer guarantee to four at-risk finance companies which could impose a liability on the New Zealand taxpayer of a further $1.7 billion? He did that in January. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, yes. Question number two, Craig Foss. 